Fortschritte, die sie sich erwartet hatten. Auf der anderen Seite für den Westbank. Dobro, evo, upravo je završio sastanak na vrhu između... Welcome to the press conference following the EU Western Balkan Summit in Tirana. The declaration has just been uh, adopted and will be published shortly. We'll have uh, a short Q&A session, but I leave the floor to the President of the European Council, please. Merci beaucoup. Bonjour à, à chacune et à, et à chacun. Je souhaite commencer par euh, remercier très chaleureusement le Premier Ministre Edi Rama pour la chaleureuse hospitalité. Cette réunion est une réunion historique, c'est une réunion au cours de laquelle nous écrivons l'histoire. Nous écrivons l'histoire parce que cette réunion a lieu pour la première fois dans la région des Balkans occidentaux. Par première fois, les leaders de l'Union européenne et les leaders des Balkans occidentaux sont autour d'une même table dans la prolongation de réunions antérieures qui ont eu lieu à Bordeaux, en Slovénie, mais également de réunions qui ont eu lieu il y a quelques mois à Bruxelles lors de ce sommet qui s'est tenu au mois de juillet. Cette réunion aujourd'hui, avec la déclaration qui accompagne euh, nos travaux, est une réunion importante parce qu'elle emporte des engagements concrets et des pas additionnels sur le chemin de l'intégration. Je le dis à plusieurs reprises, j'ai plaisir et j'ai même un peu d'émotion à le dire de manière solennelle ici à cette tribune à Tirana. Je crois profondément que l'avenir de nos enfants sera plus sûr et plus prospère avec les Balkans occidentaux à l'intérieur de l'Union européenne. Et c'est cette conviction commune qui nous rassemble pour favoriser, au travers de projets concrets 
est tangible ce rapprochement, ce processus d'intégration. Plusieurs éléments. Nous avons chacun notre devoir à réaliser. D'une part, il y a des attentes pour que les efforts de réforme en termes d'état de droit, d'indépendance de la justice, de bataille contre la corruption puissent progresser. Et d'autre part, il y a le souhait que l'Union européenne puisse consolider, conforter ses capacités à rapprocher notre marché intérieur des Balkans occidentaux de manière très tangible. C'est le sens, par exemple, de cet accord sur le roaming qui a été conclu, qui est un pas en avant, qui s'inscrit dans la continuité de cette réunion de Bordeaux, où l'idée avait, avait germé, avait fait des pas en avant. Et concrètement, ça permettra que dès l'année prochaine et à l'horizon 2027, on puisse progressivement réduire et supprimer pratiquement les frais de roaming, ce qui est une démonstration d'un engagement positif concret pour les entreprises, pour les contacts entre les citoyens, mais également pour le développement touristique des différents, des différents, euh, des, des, de, la, de la région des Balkans occidentaux. Enfin, euh, des progrès concrets sont également réalisés euh, pour euh, assumer euh, ensemble les conséquences négatives de cette guerre injustifiée et non provoquée de la Russie contre l'Ukraine. Vous savez que cette guerre entraîne des conséquences graves et sérieuses en termes énergétiques, en termes de sécurité alimentaire, en termes de conséquences économiques. And it's why it was so important to take some tangible decisions and to mobilize an important financial package in order to support and to assist the Western Balkans in, in countering the negative effects of this war launched by Russia against Ukraine. And finally, I would like to say a few words about migration. We know that migration is always a sensitive and difficult topic and difficult challenge. And we know that uh, the recent weeks, the recent months, we face again um, difficulties and an increase of the numbers. And that's why this concrete and operational cooperation with the Western Balkans is fundamental for all of us. And I would like to express my gratitude because the recent days we were able to make some progress by aligning the visa policy, which is a concrete step in the right direction. We know that some additional decisions will be needed in the following days and weeks, but we are optimistic and confident that we'll be able to make some progress and to manage together this situation. Vous le voyez, cette réunion était une réunion à mes yeux essentielle, encore une fois. Je souhaite remercier euh, Eddy Rama, je souhaite remercier l'ensemble des partenaires des Balkans occidentaux, parce qu'il y a eu autour de la table aujourd'hui beaucoup de respect, beaucoup de confiance. Nous sommes évidemment lucides, le moment que nous vivons pour nos générations sont des moments de bouleversement, bouleversement climatique, bouleversement digital, auquel s'est ajoutée cette crise du Covid qui nous a tous frappés, et puis cette guerre, cette guerre qui déclenche une transition géopolitique, et le choix qui s'offre à nous, c'est dans quelle société voulons-nous vivre demain Voulons-nous la liberté Voulons-nous les principes démocratiques qui garantissent la dignité de chaque être humain Ou voulons-nous un autre modèle Je suis totalement convaincu que le choix, il est très clair, c'est ensemble que nous voulons regarder dans la même direction pour bâtir une Union européenne qui soit solide, stable et prospère, ancrée dans les valeurs que nous partageons. Je vous remercie. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Prime Minister, you have the floor. Okay, in respect of uh, the foreign journalists here, I'm going to speak in English to make it easier. Also because it's very difficult to translate me from Albania to English. Um, uh, I want to thank uh, again, wholeheartedly, Charles Michel, uh, the President of the European Council and a dear friend, I should say. But first and foremost, really loyal, committed friends of the region. And I can say it because I've seen him fighting for the region. And in this, I want to join Ursula, uh, the president of the European Commission, another big, well-known fighter for this region. And as I said in uh, our plenary, uh, we never had We never had, at least I don't recall, another president of uh, the Council and of the Commission who uh, has been, like Charles and Ursula, so uh, resolute to advocate for the region, to push for the region and to make sure that the process, which we know it's very difficult in itself, does not die in agony. 
And uh, this being said, I want to, to underline the very historical dimension of this summit. It's the first time ever that the European, uh, the European Union gets out of the borders of EU to uh, have a summit, and this happens in uh, the Western Balkans and namely in Albania. I see it as uh, an amazing, uh, uh, an amazing uh, sign of uh, an awareness, first of all, that nowadays the European Union needs the Western Balkan as much as the Western Balkan needs the European Union. And on the other hand, I see it also as an appreciation for our country, for its role in the region as a resilient and a committed factor of peace, stability and uh, cooperation. And I want to believe also because uh, it's the moment to uh, send to all the people in the region, but, but first and foremost to the Albanian people, that the European Union is here for us, is here for you. Uh, because it's a well-known fact, the oracle of Brussels, the EU barometer, has stressed more than once that Albanians are the most pro EU nation in Europe. Not because we are naive, but because we come from a very, very real hell. Not from the French hell, which is a paradise French people call hell, but from a real hell of uh, isolation and of uh, total impossibility to connect with Europe. And we had our difficult moments we had our frustrations, we had our sufferings, but we never ever gave up on this faith, the faith on the European Union. And uh, of course, this is a summit, this is a gathering, this is a step, this is not uh, the end of uh, our, our way towards the European Union. But this is a milestone at the same time which uh, shows not only by the presence, but also, also by certain facts. I'm sure that uh, the President of the Commission will, will detail them. But I want to tell today to the students and to the youngsters in our country that uh, from this summit we come out with a great news that not only our universities will be able to, 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 to engage with Erasmus+, Plus, but they will be included in the alliance of uh, uh, higher education in Europe. And from a certain moment, uh, after, of course, all the procedures needed will be, will be uh, done, uh, our students, our kids can study from here, in every European university, in a, in a digital way, and our universities can start to make alliances and to grow together with the European University. This is something that, until now, was possible only while you become a member. As the other thing about the green, uh, the green lanes with Croatia, with uh, Italy, with Greece. This is also something new and great for uh, transportation and for trade. Also, the, the other fantastic uh, thing that we have discussed, uh, we got the support in principle, both of the President of the Council and the President of the Commission, and as far as I understood, the full support also of uh, the leaders to push for having in Tirana the uh, European College of Bruges campus. It's, an, it's, a, it's a very highly uh, reputed uh, university uh, that uh, has had its first campus in Poland in 1992 to support the Eastern uh, 
communist, former communist countries to get into EU, and now it's time to settle this campus in Tirana. It's fantastic. Uh, not less roaming agreement. So uh, our citizens here and there will be able soon to have tariffs that are much lower and will enter in the network of the European citizens. And uh, to end with the most important, energy. We already got from uh, the European Union through the Commission uh, budget support for the next year, 85 million euro. But in the same time, there is another package uh, for projects. And we already have our projects and the region will be uh, all involved in this, uh, in this path to build more sources of energy and to uh, get more distance from the Russian influence. So I, would, I could talk much longer, but uh, I want to stop here. I told also uh, the European, uh, European friends that we are hosts today and uh, I told them that in our canoon, in our first written code, uh, the house of the Albanian belonged to God and the guests. But guess what? Today we had guests that in Albania they are considered gods. The gods of the European Union. And uh, I told them that uh, the code is very clear. You have to be prepared to give your life for your guests. So uh, we were, and we are still ready. They are not. They are still here. Uh, God forbid something happened, but then we are ready to give our life. So uh, never ever will I'll use this moment to complain or to criticize or to say things that I can say much easier when I'm in Brussels. <laughs> and the very last, I will remember one thing from this summit. A beautiful moment when we were in the family photo and I was listening, many of them saying, the sun. The sun, <laughs> the sun, the beautiful sun. So we succeeded after 10 days of uh, Brussels weather to bring the sun this morning for them. So uh, what can we do more? Our life is in your disposal. Uh, Madam President, please. He has to say it because it's Brussels rules. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. And indeed, Eddie, um, it's a fantastic experience to be here. And you are outstanding hosts. We will, I think, never forget this family photo and this fantastic performance, tradition, classics, and the future, the modern part. Outstanding. Um, amazing to see that. And thank you very much for your words, let me reassure you that our support for the region really comes from the bottom of our heart and because we are deeply convinced that we belong together. Uh, you've said you would, as host, be willing to give your life for us. We don't want your life, we want to live our lives together. And thank you very much for uh, this, this outstanding summit. It was a summit where there was a very clear message of unity we want to tackle the issues, the problems, the challenges we have together. A summit of partnership with very deep, very good, frank and trustful discussions. And of course we have touched on many topics. I want to highlight a few. A big topic is of course that we want uh, to tackle the difficulties, the knock-on effects of this atrocious war that Russia has unleashed together. And one of the main topics is, of course, energy. Um, for us, it's important that together with our friends from the Western Balkan, we address uh, this energy crisis together in a way that we mirror whatever we do in the European Union also in the Western Balkans. So, for example, uh, the fact that households and business struggle as much in the Western Balkan as in the European Union 
for us is important to give the similar solutions. Therefore, this one billion package of energy support, which is split in two parts, it's 500 million direct budget support, which gives the opportunity to support in a targeted manner the vulnerable households and the vulnerable businesses. And the second half, 500 million euros in infrastructure to make sure that um, we have the investment already in the energy of the future. And the energy of the future is, of course, renewable energy. Renewable energy is cheaper, it's affordable, it's cleaner, better for our planet, and it is homegrown. It provides good jobs here at home, so it gives independence and security of supply. Um, the investment of these 500 million will go, of course, in renewables, in interconnections, so infrastructure, but also energy efficiency. Yesterday, we have approved six different projects. It goes from large-scale photovoltaic to solar district heating, from wind farms to the rehabilitation of hydropower plants, just to give you uh, an idea about that. Of course, a strong emphasis is also on energy efficiency, so, uh, to improve through uh, additional investment the situation of hospitals, schools, university from an energy, uh, um, energy efficiency standpoint um, to improve the situation. Beyond energy, of course, this is a part, is the bigger frame of the economic and investment plan. You're all familiar with it, with investments in transport and water and wastewater management, digital smart labs, just to uh, name a few. Here too, we have just adopted yesterday 40 flagship projects worth 1.8 billion euros. So the good news is also this economic and investment plan is on track. My second point uh, looks at the situation that we have overall in um, the relationship between the Western Balkan and the European Union. And let me reassure you that we are full-heartedly supporting the enlargement process and the regional integration. This year has seen a lot of progress. Uh, we have had indeed the first intergovernmental conference with Albania and North Macedonia. There is finally new movement momentum in uh, the whole process. It was a historic step to open the accession negotiations. And now the screening has started and the momentum is there. We as a commission recommend granting candidate status to Bosnia and Herzegovina on the understanding that a number of steps are taken. Now we are very much looking forward to a decision to be taken by the council. And there, besides this uh, progress that we see, there is of course the important topic of the economic integration, so the common regional market. I really want to commend you for the progress that you've done uh, in the common regional market in the last months. It is very good uh, for the region that you have signed agreements that uh, underline the importance of freedom to travel, to study, to work. It makes trade easier in the region, it creates new jobs. So all these are topics um, that are moving forward and uh, highlighted um, the importance of this summit to give it uh, speed and acceleration. A third point that we discussed today was migration. Migration has long been a shared challenge. We have a strong common interest in cooperating closely on all the aspects. It's a question of managing migration together. And therefore, yesterday, the Commission has presented an action plan on the Western Balkans to strengthen our uh, mutual cooperation on that. For me, it is important to convey again the message, you can count on our support to deal with border management and to deal with the migration and asylum process. We are in this together, and we have to manage that topic together. It is crucial for us to move forward here. At the same time, we expect all our Western Balkan partners to align swiftly with our visa policy. This is also cru crucial to maintain, um, to maintain the visa-free regimes between us because it is a question of mutual respect of the rules. And indeed, finally, I also want to emphasize the topics concerning youth. And I know, Eddie, how much youth um, is important for you. 
the projects. Uh, you are, were the one who mentioned first to me that you wanted more opportunities created in the region for young people. And you were the one who asked us to think about the possibility to opening the European Universities Initiative to all Western Balkan countries. Today we can say we have delivered. Thank you very much for starting this process. The Western Balkan Universities will be able to join the European Universities Network. This means it enables students from the Western Balkans not only to study physically in the different um, uh, universities of Europe, but also remotely here in Tirana to have full access to the European universities. And in that is your vision to have one day the College of Europe here, like in Bruges, like in Poland, and indeed full support also from my side. This is something where I hope that in due time at one of the next summits we can say we delivered. Thank you very much. Thank you, Madam President. We'll take the uh, first few questions from Albanian media. Yes, please. Clan TV. Pytja parosh për të dy presidentet. Nuk e dia keni arritur të kuptoni. Nuk e dia keni arritur të kuptoni një të parë që i karakterizon njerëzit në këtë pjesë të Balkanit për endimor. Që është që duan të gjojnë gjërat qartë dhe me zëtë lartë. Pse u zhjotë Tirana? Ishtë arsua pëse shqiptarët janë populli më Europë dashës dhe se serbët për shumë bullë janë populli që e duan më shumë rusim. Ishte kjo një nga arsua dhe pyëtja për Kryeministrën Rama, ka një paket të dytë për gjithë Balkanit për ndimorë, për Shqiprinë. A kemi shifra se sa do t'i takoj Shqipëris dhe kush janë projektet që ju synoni të mbështesni me këtë mbështetit bashkimit e Europian? Në ndërë. Maybe why Tirana? In fact, a few a few weeks ago, I had the occasion to uh, to propose to the Prime Minister to host that meeting. It was very important for us to have this summit by the end of the year, and we thought indeed that uh, Tirana and Albania was uh, the, the appropriate location for hosting such a, a summit. And I would like again to to thank you, uh, the Prime Minister, the AD, to thank your team because it was very impressive how it was possible here in Albania in a limited period of time to organize such a summit. It's not not easy. We have this experience in Brussels. Many summits in Brussels, it requires a lot of uh, efforts, of uh, logistical questions that need to be, to be solved. And I think this is a very strong signal, not only for Albania, for Albania, of course, but this border the debt, in my opinion. This, uh, uh, this is a very powerful signal to the people of the Western Balkans, because the, the, the goal is not just to have uh, important talks with the leaders. The, the goal is also to send a powerful signal to people in the Western Balkans. We are absolutely convinced that our future is together. Yes, perhaps uh, the part that you asked. Um, 85 million is the direct budget support within this 500 million package. Um, there are um, quite a few different projects um, that are now being funded with the other 500 million. I think the six projects that we approved yesterday are 120 million. Um, I know that uh, some uh, of the projects are, for example, a large photovoltaic power plant um, here in Albania, but I do not know all the projects from the top of my head, so perhaps we can uh, go more in detail with our staff. Now, the, the Balkan way about why Tirana would be because we are the best, because we are the oldest, uh, and of course, uh, because uh, we are the, loyal, the most loyal. But uh, I, 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 I don't think this, and I didn't say this. <laughs> I, sa I simply said that uh, to them that this is the best place to be for you because this is the most pro-European country in Europe based on EU barometer, not on my opinion. And uh, I would add, because uh, Tirana is so beautiful and uh, uh, if Mark Rutte yesterday told to the Dutch press that this is the most emotional adventure of this year for the European Union, imagine now going uh, more soft how beautiful it is. Anyhow, uh, when it comes to the package, I would say that uh, beyond what Ursula already explained, 
and that you know there is another package which is based on the projects. And we have several projects that we uh, are ready to apply for that. Uh, one is the pipeline that will connect uh, FIER with Vlora to make sure the connection between uh, the trans adriatic pipeline and the Vlora, Vlora terminal and uh, thermal uh, power uh, uh, that will be transformed in, uh, in uh, gas. Uh, and uh, everyone today mentioned in the, in, the, in the plenary that the Balkans have a big potential to become a real hub to help the Central Europe to get out of the Russian dependence. And of course, Albania is part of the Western Balkans. And of course, Albania has an important potential and there's an important role to play in this. And I'm very happy that this is a common understanding on our side and on the European Union side. So we will work together. And of course, as you know, European Union doesn't give money and tell, tell you, OK, take them because you are the oldest, you are the best, and uh, we have uh, we'll love for you. The money are there. We have to make the right projects and to fulfill all the criteria and then get the money. So, uh, but I am sure that we will be able to, as we have been able before, we'll be able now, and not only us, but all the, all the Western Balkan countries, because it will go through the WBIF, right? So this is... Uh, Thank you. Um, it's Yona, yes, from ABC News. Valim <laughs> Tirit. Tani që summit i mbaroj edhe Bruxelles i ardhin Tiran, dërë të tira shioj valat e djelin ton, pyetja ime për të tre ju është kur do të bi Tirana në Bruxelles, kur do të antarësohet Shqipëria dhe rajoni, pasi duket si kur duhet që Rusia të shtoj bomba diku që ju të keni bëmëndi në rajon. Valim dhe. I can, I can start. Uh, I would say that uh, it's unfair to, to say this uh, because uh, the progress that has been made, especially in the last period, and by no doubt also because of the war as an accelerator, is uh, immense. Is immense. It was not 10 years ago. It was little time ago when we were in Brussels and we had all these fights and we had all this press conference and uh, Charles didn't even show in press conference and so on. And it's a totally different, different thing. And uh, let me conclude my part by saying this. When it comes to the membership, we should do our homework. And I told them, I tell always to everyone, and uh, I haven't changed my mind. Before, when I had my debates with some of the European uh, friends and leaders about why we need the accession talks, I used to say, we need to have the tools of the accession process to make ourselves stronger, to make our institutions stronger, to build our systems, to, to get in the level of a EU functioning state. It's not the membership, it's just starting. Today I have the same opinion. We need to do the homework. So it's not about hiring, but in the same time, it, what is happening is it is historic because the European Union is in the meantime creating spaces and creating mechanisms of support that are bringing us nearer without waiting to be members. In the old way, and the old way not of 30 years ago, of few years ago, never we would have got in the alliance of universities. Because to get in the alliance of universities, you need to be European Union member. We are getting there now. Why? 
because there is a common understanding that while we do the homework, we need to be supported and to be more, uh, more near and near and near to get this Europe together. The roaming agreement would never happen if uh, this acceleration would not be present. The green lanes, all the things that are happening are new things. It's a new, it's a new mindset. And that's why I said, thanks to uh, both presidents that are here, and I have the honor to be here with them, uh, things are changing. And if you remember, when Ursula got the vote to be president of commission, she said, it's the birth of a geopolitical commission. And this is what is happening. For the first time, the Balkans are being seen and treated like a geopolitical, strategic reason for the European Union to think in depth. Now, when we'll be members, one thing is sure. We, Albanians and Albania, will be loyal to the European Union even if the European Union disappears. We'll continue to fight to be members, even if we are single member. So it doesn't matter. We need to progress. This is the most important. And I would like to add that the EU doesn't intend to disappear. Exactly. Uh, but even, <laughs> we'll protect the EU from you. <laughs> but I would like to say a few words. Je voudrais aussi réagir à cette question. D'abord, quelques éléments. D'abord, je n'ai pas attendu cette réunion pour venir à Tirana, pour venir en Albanie. D'abord, comme Premier ministre belge, et j'ai l'occasion régulièrement d'avoir des, des, des échanges très, très intenses, très précis avec le Premier ministre. Et puis, depuis trois ans, dans, dans ma capacité, et avant le déclenchement de la guerre par la Russie contre l'Ukraine, j'ai l'occasion aussi de venir ici à Tirana. Et ce sont ces dialogues, ces échanges, cette meilleure compréhension avec Edi Rama, mais avec également les autres leaders de la région, qui nous ont aussi fait mesurer au départ de l'Union européenne l'importance d'accélérer un certain nombre de processus. Et nous étions déjà nombreux depuis les dernières années à considérer qu'il fallait accélérer le processus d'intégration avec les Balkans occidentaux. Et c'est vrai que la guerre déclenchée par la Russie a renforcé ce sentiment, cette impression qu'il y avait une dimension géopolitique urgente qu'il fallait euh, appréhender. Mais les faits, les faits sont les faits. Nous étions il y a quelques mois à Bruxelles. Il y a quelques mois à peine à Bruxelles. Et vous vous souvenez des conférences de presse du Premier ministre Edi Rama euh, à Bruxelles à l'issue de la Réunion. Il y a eu à Bruxelles un sentiment de frustration réciproque, un sentiment de fatigue, un sentiment de résignation. Mais le sursaut a été aussi possible dans la foulée et grâce à cette réunion de Bruxelles, avec la volonté de force positive de part et d'autre, de travailler pour débloquer ce qui était bloqué. Et c'était bloqué de manière injuste, de manière absolument injuste. Et c'est ça qui a permis de relancer, à son de processus, de relancer une ambition. Et ici, la liste qui a été décrite n'est pas une liste d'intentions générales et généreuses la main sur le cœur. Ce sont des projets concrets et tangibles qui sont le fruit d'échanges que nous avons eus il y a quelque temps déjà, avant le déclenchement de la guerre de la Russie contre l'Ukraine, avec Edi Rama, qui, je me souviens, me disait il faut, par exemple, ne pas attendre la fin d'un processus d'intégration pour faire en sorte qu'il y ait des résultats progressifs qui soient tangibles et perceptibles par les citoyens dans nos pays, que nos citoyens dans nos pays comprennent le bénéfice de ce rapprochement sans attendre le terme d'un processus. Et donc, pour répondre à la question, à bon, titre personnel, j'espère que le plus vite possible, il y, a une il y aura une intégration effective des Balkans occidentaux. Ça suppose du courage, du travail, des réformes qui doivent être menées, menées à bien. Mais pour être tout à, fait, tout à fait clair, quand on parle ici euh, de paquet énergétique, de paquet d'investissement économique, quand on parle d'université, les jeunes albanais qui vont être connectés davantage sur les de l'Union Européenne, ce projet d'amener le collège de Bruges au travers d'un campus ici euh, en Albanie, euh, les projets qui touchent aussi à la, à la sécurité, à la coopération en matière de migration, tout ça sont des sujets extrêmement concrets qui ont un impact direct dans la vie des citoyens, dans la vie des entreprises. Ce ne sont pas des discours généraux ou généreux. Donc vous le voyez, on est heureux d'être à Tirana et on viendra encore souvent à Tirana. Et on espère que notre ami Eddy et que l'ensemble de ses équipes viendront aussi à Bruxelles pour travailler ensemble sur notre avenir commun. I would like to share a few thoughts where you left, Eddy. Uh, it is true that what we realize in these decisive times because of the brutal war that Russia unleashed against a peaceful neighbor, a neighbor that only wanted to determine how they see their future by themselves, 
we see a very decisive time. And it is like a curtain that is being raised and you look at the essence of things. And the essence of our union is that we are a union of values. Yes, of course, we are also a union of prosperity, but fundamentally, we are a union of values. And yes, I have the deep impression that in these decisive months, which are also transformative times for the European Union, we feel in the Western Balkan, in the European Union, this transformative movement forward, but we take the same direction of travel. You can see it in the economic integration, the way we address, for example, the energy crisis, that together we already align right now in investing massively in renewables with the view that in a future time, hopefully very close future, we will be in one union and use the same renewable um, infrastructure that we are building now. An even more telling example is indeed uh, the, uh, Europe, the universities of Europe. Because nothing is more convincing than young people who are growing up in the same educational environment to build the next European Union, next generation European Union, and of course sharing all the values and therefore working for being one union. And here I think indeed this atrocious war has brought more speed, more acceleration and more momentum in the whole soul. Thank you. Um, Suzanne, yes please, Politico, over there. Suzanne, could you stand up? They've, I've, yes. Um, please. Uh, Suzanne Lynch from Politico. Um, it's a question for President Michel. Do you think there is enough support for, to grant candidate status to Bosnia-Herzegovina next week? We heard from the Commission President that this was proposed by the Commission, but maybe you would update us on that. Now, I, of course, I, I don't want, I don't want to, to anticipate, but there is a clear proposal on the table, which is very good. On the other hand, the Czech presidency is working very hard in order to prepare the next uh, ministerial meeting on the question. We are uh, supporting behind the scene all the efforts that are, that are needed, but I do not intend to anticipate in order to, to avoid making the talks more complex or more, or more difficult. I hope, I hope, personally, I hope that uh, a good signal will be, will be given very, very soon in the following days. Uh, but let's see what will be the decision uh, taken at the ministerial level. And, and Mr. Rama, is there a response to the attack on the, the apparent attack on the opposition leader just outside here in Tirana today? Do you have a response to that? Uh, my clear response is already out uh, since an hour. And I have nothing to add to it. It's in uh, the website of the, of the government. Thank you. Philippe Jacquet de, du Monde. Je voudrais, Philippe Jacquet, Le Monde. Je voudrais euh, évoquer aussi le sujet de l'élargissement, euh, notamment du Kosovo. Euh, Aujourd'hui, il y a cinq, cinq pays qui ne reconnaissent pas encore ce pays. Et euh, ce matin, la présidente du Kosovar a, a demandé ou a annoncé qu'elle souhaiterait déposer la candidature à l'Union. Est-ce que c'est aujourd'hui possible et comment vous voyez euh, les choses euh, pour le Kosovo Peut-être deux points brièvement. Donc, je confirme que cette information a été communiquée euh, par, la, par la présidente du, du Kosovo, premier élément. Et deuxième élément, lorsque cette demande sera formellement adressée, il appartiendra au Conseil de l'Union euh, de traiter en premier lieu ce sujet, de voir quelle suite sera donnée à cette, euh, à cette initiative. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Madame la Présidente, Prime Minister, merci d'avoir nous. Nous vous back à Brussels. Merci.